All right, this is the first play opening after opening tip against Mississippi State. You guys know the drill. Let's play it and run it back. So there are two main components to this play. The first being the formation or set. So right now we have two bigs at the elbows, and obviously you're going to have the wings corners filled. So we know this is horns. So, so we have, it starts at horns, and then another variation we have is we're going to have Kentucky's guard run all the way across from the wing. That's an Iverson cut. Now while he's running this Iverson cut, made famous by Allen Iverson, the wing he's running to, where there's already a Kentucky player, he's in a vacate, so he's in a clear. And then let's rewind that a little bit. So as the cut occurs, they set the screen, the bigs. But also notice 23 right here. He pops out. So let's check the defense. We have, the, look at this paint. Paint's wide open right now. Spacing is still being, it's still a fluctuated work in progress. It has not fully spaced. But as we can tell already, we have a Kentucky big setting a, a, pin, a pin down and the big here at the top of the key looking to swing it to the guard that's receiving the screen. Let's pause it again. He receives the screen. We have the weak side wing vacating, and we have the big who just passed the ball moving as well. What happens here? We're going to have a pin down and a pin down. This is happening. This, this is kind of a mover blocker esque how they do a pin and a flare at the same time. Uh, a mirror concept, I would say. So the screens are set. Now the ball is reversed once again, and what do we have here? We have the two man game. Now let's look at the defense again. We have. Each man is accounted for, but also look at the spacing. Look where my mouse is. That's a lot of space for the two-man game. So EJ Montgomery gets the ball. He opens up with an inside pivot. Does it make a move to the basket? Now, Kentucky's player right here where my mouse is, if he was probably at the three-point line or a little bit spaced out, there could be a little bit more room to operate. I don't know if Montgomery here felt the defender behind him, but here you have South Carolina here. I'm sorry, Mississippi State, excuse me. I got confused by the colors for a second. They're all eyes are all on the ball. He goes towards the jabs towards the paint and does a contested two and misses. But that's the first instance of the play where we're going to have an I horns to Iverson cut and there's going to be a clear and one of the bigs will pop out. So knowing that, we'll move on to the other variations of the same play. Okay, we are a few minutes later into the game. We're going to run the play again and see what the different wrinkle is this time. So this also ends in a miss like the first clip, but let's go to see where the differences are. Well, first off, let's go to the setup. So as so you have the wing already clearing before the bigs are even set. I notice when the Iverson screen occurs, a little disjointed here. So not the best setup, but it get, the play definitely improves as it goes on. Now we have Montgomery popping out, receiving the pass. We have Richards who sets the screen. So right now everything looks the same. He'll set the screen. We'll have the wing cut through. Now, where's the difference? As we saw last time, we saw two screens being set at the same time that mirrored the uh, pin flare that you see in the mover blocker, like what Virginia runs. Here, it doesn't happen. And as you can see, it's really just where the eyes are of Kentucky. This is really just setting up to be a pin down on the strong side to get the guard open for a catch and two-man game opportunity. So we'll pause it there. And it's a missed floater, but let's actually go back to the setup. So it's pretty clear right here by the Mississippi State defender that the pin is being set. So you have his man who actually, look, his outside foot is even. His inside foot, excuse me, is even with Montgomery's outside foot. He's being very cautious of the screen that's going to be set. That explains his footwork and positioning. He wants to show or hedge to make the to get in Kentucky's mind that the, the play and the pass is not going to be as easy or as uh, ideal as they want it to be. So he does ends up pretty much looking like a hard hedge, for example, on a screen. Now check this out. Montgomery has clear airspace. Look at all this space right there. He can just roll to the rim and get a lob. Now, as we know, it's a missed floater, but the lob opportunity was there for an easier two. I'm sure they checked this out in the film room following this game. 
and practiced that week and cleaned it up to, to understand that if this opportunity presents itself again, the lob's there. Also, if Richard stayed right here in the weak side dunker spot, and as you know where my mouse is, he floats out to the more to the short corner area, then this puts his man in conflict, where if he commits, then Richards is also open for a lob. So there's potentially two lob opportunities on this play. It doesn't occur, but that's one thing that was probably reviewed. Now we have the drive, and notice where the floater is. Let's go back a little bit to when the floater actually occurs. So we have Richards' defender. He's too far to contest the shot. Richards is here for a little mid-range opportunity. And if Montgomery rolled harder to the basket, that lob is there. Actually, the lob is there the entire time. So it's a miss too, but to go back to how it looks the same, we have the setup being the same. It's a little disjointed and not as smooth, you know, as fluid as the first clip we saw. But we have the horns, the Iverson cut, the first screen is set for the pop out to reverse the ball. Montgomery is then going to set a screen, but what's different is remember, there's not two screens being set at the same time. So we haven't seen two screens set at the same time. For the and the ball is caught mid range, elbow parallel, you know, where the elbow is. Could have had a lob opportunity, but we saw the floater. But once again, this is keeping the defense off balance where they think it's going to be one thing because it looks similar to the last clip, but it's a different execution, different opportunity. And it's something that can, Kentucky will go back to, as we'll see later in the game, just with a different wrinkle. So let's go look at the final variation of the Horns Iverson cut and clear and see what Kentucky does different this time. So once again, we add a different wrinkle to the base play. So let's go back. Here we have, you have horns. So we see the two bigs at the elbow area. We have, once again, the corner where the, on the ball side, the strong side, he's leaving and being replaced by the Iverson player. Iverson player will go down to the block. And once again, Montgomery's in a pop out. Now we have some, we're going to, on script right now. We have one big setting a pin down. He's going to pass it out, and now we're expecting another pin down from Montgomery. Now, where it, it's different from the last clip we just went over, it was pretty deliberate. It was going to be a pin down, and the player, a Kentucky player, was a little bit closer to the baseline to get in the mid-range area. But as you'll see here, the pin is set. There's not two screens at the same time. But look where the ball is caught. It's caught on the perimeter. Now, why is it caught on the perimeter? Clearly, Cal, uh, Kentucky staff, Coach Cal, liked the one-on-one -on -one opportunity that E.J. Montgomery had to operate in the post. So this really is a two-man game that's being disguised for a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. So here we have, once again, the ball's caught on the perimeter. Enter the post. Now, to, from my triangle love here, this is what Tex Winter would probably call an outside speed cut. And the purpose of that cut is if he goes, you know, gingerly towards the, the, the corner here where my mouse is, or he runs through slowly, then he gives his man an opportunity to help on the one-on-one -on -one opportunity. So let's go back one more time. Quickly vacates. We have a one-on-one. -on -one. And as we've seen in the prior two clips, Montgomery, who is a lefty, by the way, so he's catching on the right block where they prefer to operate, that's lefties. He opens up with the inside pivot, does the one dribble pound, and we see a make here with a baby hook. So let's go over the differences one more time. So similar to all three clips, what are we going to see? We're going to see horns. We're going to see a clear from the strong side wing. We're going to see an Iverson cut where they go down to the block. Now, Montgomery, who we popped out in every single clip we saw, he pops out to the perimeter. You see a screen that is a down a pin, pin down that is set to reverse the ball. Now we don't see two screens set at the same time. The ball is reversed. Now, what's already different right now is it's not dumped down to Montgomery. And similar to the second clip, that there's not a pin down to catch it in the mid-range elbow area. Instead, it's reversed very high up on the perimeter because they want to disguise this two man, they want to disguise the one-on-one -on -one really as a two-man game. The ball is entered, a quick speed cut by the guard to allow the Kentucky big, which is Montgomery, to operate one-on-one. -on -one. He's a lefty. He catches it on his block using his jab step and his inside pivot and opens up for a good two. So with all the clips we saw here, I would say overall like 60-75% of the way, all plays start the same. This is a great misdirection. This is great smoke and mirrors and allows the personnel that are on the court for Kentucky to operate to their strengths, specifically designed for the big men. We know that Kentucky always has great bigs. So this is great coaching, great execution that keeps the defense off balance. They can't predict which variation of the play they're going to see. 
And because of that, this is a play that can be ran throughout the season because if, just, if the defense thinks they know it's going to be one option, Kentucky can quickly counter to the another, uh, another option they have designed within this play. That's great execution by Coach Cal. Love seeing this by Kentucky.